Okay, in this video, um, I'm going to show basically how to press a t-shirt with a single color vinyl logo. Um, the vinyl is a hot vinyl, hot press vinyl, which effectively means that once you've pressed the shirt, you should peel off the carrier film while it's still hot. I'm going to go through just a quick talk about the logo itself, how I um, size the logos, how I make sure it's easier for me to align. I'll go through basically a quick, a quick touch on, a quickly touch on the type of video, what it looks like, so you can see when you get it, you can actually understand the difference between one side and the other and how it actually works. And then once I've weeded it all out, I'll then actually press a few T-shirts so you can actually see the end results. So what we're looking at here is the logo that I'm pressing onto a few shirts. This logo, as you can see obviously, is a round logo. Now the difference, or the, the important thing about this is, is you need to know the size of the logo because when you're going to start pressing different size shirts, whether it's um, ladies' shirts or men's shirts in small or large or extra large or whatever, if you create a small logo, that might not look so bad on, let's say, um, a small women's or a, a small uh, or a medium women's shirt and not so bad on a men's small and medium. But as soon as you start getting up to large, extra large or two times extra large, that logo is going to start looking a little bit stupid and lonely on such a big shirt. So you have to start thinking about having different size logos for different size shirts. So I've created this logo um, for a certain size of the shirts that I actually press. Now, if I just highlight this, you can see here it says it's 300 by 300. Okay. Now, this is for certain sizes of shirts that I actually press myself. Now, I stick to basically one brand and the sizes that come with that brand. I've got seven sizes in the men's and five sizes in the ladies. Now, some of obviously some of the sizes um, in the ladies will transfer up onto the men's sizes. So the smaller, uh, the larger ladies shirts will be pretty much the same size as some of the men's smaller shirts. So I can use the same size logo. So I created a chart that shows me um, all of the sizes that are available that I actually use. And on that chart, I also put what size logo I need to make for that particular size of shirt. Um, also, you can probably see in the chart that I also have where it says from the collar. This is the distance um, from the bottom of the collar at the front downwards to where I put the top of the logo. Now, this becomes more obvious in the video later on, and I'll explain it better later on as well. But there's a chart if you want to use something like that to give you an ID, an idea, or use it as a reference. So, I've created my logo. Obviously, you'll create your logo. This logo is uh, a vector file, and it's been been produced in a package specifically for dealing with vector images. I'm using Corel Draw, but I have done a previous video that shows the difference between bitmaps and vectors and what software you can use to actually uh, manipulate and work on those types of images. So really this is just a quick introduction on how I prepare the image for cutting and then for pressing onto the shirt. So the first thing is we size the shirt up and we uh, with the logo and we make sure the logo is for whatever size shirt we're going to use. Now, in this particular instance, as I said before, this is a 300 by 300. So, to prepare it for cutting, the first thing I do is, once I've grouped the image, I take two small circles, I place one top and one at the bottom of the logo. I then center both of those logos and I group them together. I then center 
those two dots now vertically and horizontally to the logo okay so you can see a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom this helps me now when I actually come to press the shirt that when I lay the logo onto the shirt I know that it's basically straight up and down and I can also use that to measure the distance left and right across the shirt itself okay so once I've done that I then group all of those items together then here I basically have a weeding frame so when it uses when I use this frame it allows me to to just get rid of the excess that's within that frame and the frame is pretty much as close towards the edges of this logo as possible so now you can see when I start to pull the excess vinyl out from here I'm not going to waste all of the vinyl that's outside of here and finally oh not finally sorry what I also did was in the drawing application that I use I created this shape and basically what this shape does is it fits just around the image of the highwayman in the center now I'm just going to line it up correctly okay and what this means is now that when I start once I've cut the image out of the the, the, the hot press vinyl I can now weed out all of this excess in the center and not have to worry about all the lettering on the outside so I will weed all of this out pull it out pick all the smaller parts out of it and from then on I will then take all the smaller parts out of the lettering and then weed out this main part all the way around and do that separately and the last thing that we need to do that's still quite important is to make sure that once we cut it we actually know which size it is we've cut so we know what size it is for whichever shirt we're going to press the one more thing I will say about this is if you notice that I've actually this whole logo is in reverse apart from the size that's because the way the vinyl is created when we cut the image we'll be cutting directly into the vinyl but then we'll actually be turning it around and laying the vinyl down onto the shirt so it needs to be mirrored so that when we place it onto the shirt it will be, be appearing the right way round as we look at the shirt so once I've done all of this I combine all of that and then I save that shirt as whatever logo 300 by 300 so once we've done this now we're now ready to actually get the vinyl onto the cutter cut this out and then weed it out